Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight we have with us as our guest back on the show, musician Snowy Shaw. Welcome back to the show, Snowy. Thank you so much for having me again. That <laughs> usually don't happen. <laughs> No, no, Snowy, you have a lot of new things going on that we're going to discuss, but first of all, let's give people a little Snowy Shaw history lesson. Now, first of all, how did you get your name, Snowy? Uh, because I had this platina, what do you say, platinum blonde hair and stuff, so, so it was a nickname from when I was a kid. You know, my real name then, before I changed it uh, legally, was Tommy. Tommy, so, so they called me... Uh, Tomten in Swedish that is Santa and, and uh, it was also Snow White and uh, so uh, then a, a abbreviation of that is Snowy so so that's how it came about. Yeah, so. All right now Snowy a lot of yeah. people familiar with your works in many bands so of course some of the bands that they're really interested in, in what your experience were like with are King Diamond and then later on Merciful Fate as well so what was it like playing in those bands? For you, uh, to me, it was what do you call life-altering. <laughs> the whole experience from 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 joining King Diamond. I mean, I, I, I was so green. I had no experience. I've been playing a lot with with bands and then trying to get my own band going and shit like that. But when I flew over to to Los Angeles to join the band, I mean, I'd never been to America before, and uh, I was basically a kid with no clue about anything, but I knew how to play drums. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they hired me, so, so. Yeah, but it was really, really good, and, and uh, you know, to me, you know, I hadn't had it, before that, I, I didn't, didn't have an, I didn't have any, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't played any shows for years and years before that. And then it was like small gigs at the youth center or something in, in, um, in Gothenburg, Sweden. And then I, you know, went out on three month headline tour all over America. It was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And it was really cool, you know. And then, yeah. then you hooked up later on, even after all that, you went back and you were with Merciful Fate. So how did that all come about? Uh, the thing is that I did, um, I joined King Diamond because I mean, when they did Conspiracy Album, mm -hmm. um, or actually when they were planning on doing that, they were auditioning a lot of drummers because Mickey, uh, they lived in Los Angeles since a couple of years back then. They moved there in 87 or something. And, uh, and they decided that they wanted to move back to Europe, or to, to Scandinavia. But Mickey wanted to, wanted to stay in uh, Los Angeles in America. So uh, not only because of that, but I guess he got fed up with the whole thing because uh, it became a little bit too much centered around King Diamond himself. Uh, as opposed to a band that it usually was in, in the in the past, so uh, I guess he got pissed off and, and decided to quit and leave the band. And they auditioned a lot of drummers from all over the world. I mean, people flew in from Switzerland or, or you know all around in America and so on. You know, really good guys and well experienced uh, named drummers and all that. And they tried out like 40 drummers or, or more. But they couldn't find anyone who can nail it. Maybe they could sort of uh, emulate what he was doing. But when it comes to um, coming up with new stuff, with new so songs and all that, they had zero ideas, really. So uh, I got a phone call because Pete Black, uh, first of all, Mickey D, he told me in advance that, okay, I, I, when I met him at home, when he was home over Christmas and stuff, and he said, I'm planning on leaving King Diamond. I think you should take the spot. But we were both a little bit drunk, and stuff, so I thought, yeah, yeah, but that is just the alcohol doing the talking, so. Fuck that, I want to make my own band, and this was in 88, you know, <laughs> or, uh, or Christmas Day 88. And anyway, so a couple of months later, I got a, I got a postcard from Pete Black. He, he wanted to keep in contact me, with me, the guitar player, because he had been keeping his eyes on me for a long time and wanted me, me to join his old band, Geisha, and, and, and in the future his his uh, solo band or whatever he was planning. But anyway, uh, I still wanted to make my own fucking band. I mean, it's like a, a story of my life, basically. Um, so anyway, um, uh, where, where, where were we? Talking <laughs> yeah, about... He, he called me one day and said, hey, 
Um, I'm coming back home to, to Sweden tomorrow and I want you to meet up with you because I have something to talk to you, to you about and stuff. So uh, I met, met up with him and he was starting to yapping about and complaining about all those drummers. They were incompetent enough or whatever. So um, anyway, so he said, are you willing to try out for King Diamond? I figured that this is the second time I'm get, getting asked about this and <laughs> I had nothing else going for it because I was surrounded by all this poodle haired fucking hair metal crap <laughs> and I was like that. That is absolutely not what I want, want to do. So anyway, I figured, yeah, yeah, uh, I'd be an idiot to turn this down a second time. And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. I love Merciful Fate. I grew up with that, and I love King Diamond too. So, so, and that is, you know, up my alley, so to speak, with the horror and, and, mm -hmm. and the technical music and heavy music and yeah, real theatrical and cool. You know, he also is a product of Alice Cooper, I suppose. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, so I tried out like I took the cassette and re learned four songs in my rehearsal room and uh, the next day the following day Pete Black, Black came down to my rehearsal room and we just banged away and uh, he said yeah all is cool and he called up King Diamond and said yeah stop, stop looking well, I got the guy I got the guy, best replacement for Mickey D ever here uh, so, so um, yeah that was that two, way, two, two weeks later or something we flew over hooked up with Hal Pacino in Copenhagen and flew over. But we didn't actually flew over because they, they threw us off the, the flight <laughs> because we were so drunk and fucked up. <laughs> that was like literally thrown into this rock and roll circus and they were behaving like, yeah, you know, like rock stars and, and, and you, know, you know, yeah, behaving like idiots basically. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, what the fuck, Who do, does it have to be this way? <laughs> By the way, so the police came in and took us off the plane and blah, blah, blah. We had to reschedule the whole thing. But eventually I ended up in Los Angeles with the King. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I tried it out. And after the second song, he turned around and gave me a thumbs up and said, you're in the band. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that kind of changed my life. It was like a before and after experience, pretty much. Like everything, I have everything to thank King Diamond for. And now you're still a little bit connected, right? You're in Denner Sherman as well, right now, right? I think we talked about that before, where you asked me, oh yeah, it must have been good to get together with a guy. Yeah, I, mean, but, mm -hmm. I didn't even meet them because I recorded the drums in Gothenburg <laughs> and they are in Copenhagen. <laughs> but I met them, of course. I mean, they came up with the mixing and stuff and, and we did a video together and stuff way up in North in Sweden and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah. But, I'm not so much involved in the band. I mean, I think it's put on, on the back burner right now because Hank is supposedly going to make a solo album. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, so, yeah, but I've been the studio drummer. Uh, I haven't played any shows with them whatsoever because uh, I've decided that I need to put the time off to do my own shit because otherwise it's never going to happen. It's now or never. I mean, I turned 50 this year and... Uh, yeah, I better fucking do this before I get too old. <laughs> but, but but all along, Snow, even when you were working with all these other bands, didn't you kind of do some of your own stuff too, anyways? Yeah, yeah, I've done. I mean, Notre Dame. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in officially in Notre Dame that I had this kind of uh, bizarre band with French people in it and so on. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, but... I just invented that band. Those people didn't really exist. <laughs> so I played all the instruments and everything like that. So. Yeah, but also with Dream Evil, I wrote this book, I have a metal, that album. I mean, I wrote 90% of all the material and I was the driving force and, and same with Memento Mori and Ill Will and this and that and Mad Architect. So I, I've been very much involved in, in all the bands. It's, it's not just that I've been a hired gun or just a drummer i mean even though it might say on the album that snowshaw drums but i will I play all the guitars and i write all the songs and play all the bass <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah that's the way it works because i mean i was doing an interview and they asked me what, what was the most complicated thing with making this white is the new black my my first album here uh how did you make it work um in the studio, it must have felt kind of awkward to don't have a full band behind you. Now, but it doesn't work like that. I mean, I've been recording albums on distance, like for American bands that I never even talked to or, or, or obviously not met. But I mean, you you have this um, 
time code, sort of like a click track, of course. So you get the, the, the guitar riffs and uh, in the songs, and you record the drums for for instance, or if I do the bass or vocals, whatever. And you, you don't need necessarily to be in the same room anymore. This right. kind of kills the illusion or the whole, wow, rock and roll fantasy. <laughs> but I mean, in this day and age, it's possible to actually do it like that. You know? So to me, it's not that any different from, from making my own album when I play, play and sing everything from, from, from what I've been doing in the past with other bands, really. And and speaking of some more of your past too, uh, Snowy, people want to know about your days in Therian. Uh, yeah, what can I say about that? <clears throat> I was in the band involved for about six years or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's some, I guess that's some sort of record. <laughs> for me because I, I tend to um, have a short attention span. I burn intensively. And then I burn out, I guess, and I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, not just that, but I need to have some sort of um, diversity musically. And, and that is also why I, for the most part of my life, I've had, I've been active in two or three bands simultaneously. Uh, because, um, I mean, Therion is kind of operatic, pompous, and uh, uh, symphonic and all that. While I was doing that, I was also doing Triple X, which is more like 70s glam glitter rock, Mm -hmm. uh, to get some sort of balance in life. And not just because of that, because I have an an urge to, to, or a desire to do, yeah, different kinds of music, I suppose, you know. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I like like horror movies, but I cannot watch that all the time. I want to see some drama or some romantic comedy or whatever to to get balance in life. And Mm -hmm. and, uh, otherwise, it becomes too one-sided or whatever you want to say <laughs> and and now people want to know what you're up to now and i know you love to talk about this so <laughs> and it's per- so so tell us all now snowy what do you have going on now i know you got this new solo project that you uh, want to tell us about so tell us all about it you know why you wanted to start this what's going on what you guys done so far everything go ahead um yeah, where do I start? Uh, this has been leading up to this because um, I've been waiting for many years. And, and uh, the most common question I get where, when I do interviews now is that, what took you so long? And, uh, yeah, I don't know what, what took me so long. I mean, uh, what can I say? I mean, things take time. If you want to do something good, it takes time. And I've been very uh, picky about every little detail. Let's say for the, for, the insta, for instance, the mixing part has been a real nightmare because I don't necessarily want when I go to someone I, I record everything in my own studio. But then I, when it comes to the mix and all, they seem to think, yeah, but this is industry standard. This is how the, the audience want metal to sound in 2017 or 18 or whatever it was. And but I say, yeah, but. This is the, not the way I wrote the songs. I want the songs to have their own life and and and, um, and to to sound the way that they do in my head to, uh, when I wrote them and stuff. So it's been a very tough process, I gotta say there. And I have to fuck that shit. I don't want to trigger the drums. I don't want to uh, use that much compression on, and I don't, I don't want to erase all the, the little. Uh, flaws or, or uh, I definitely don't want to have melodyne and uh, correct the vocals. I mean, this is what it is. I can, I want a human touch on things and uh, that is kind of unusual these days and I have to really struggle to get what I want to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where were we? <laughs> You're telling us all about it. We don't even know the name of your solo project yet. Yeah, but the ma- name of a solo project, project is fairly fucking easy because it's Snow Shaw. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I mean, this is not like I've been stressing that fact that I haven't made a solo album, a solo album. This is just the first out of six, actually, or seven, blah, blah, blah. Kind of complicated. I will try to explain it as the best I can. But this is the start of a solo career. Uh, I mean, let's say I've been doing this with other bands, been involved in so many bands. Uh, for the past 25 to 28 years or something. Uh, but the way I figured that I could never feel really uh, satisfied creatively being involved in a group. 
So, so I got to do it myself, basically. And um, so for for the for the for the rest of my days, I will be flying solo. You know, that's it. Yeah. So, so tell us now about this new album that you guys are that you <laughs> I keep uh, wanting to associate you with a, a group snowy <laughs> so, 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 yeah, well, I gotta say that I have a fully competent guy, uh, live band though, mm-hmm. that I bring in every time I play shows because even though I play in the studio the bass and the guitars and the, 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 the drums and all that but when it comes to playing live it's kind of impossible to do that at the same time obviously <laughs> so so I have a fully competent lineup of um, Good musicians who are, uh, yeah, who do, do as I say. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's half the battle right there. And now you got the your first solo album, White is the New Black, is going to be out soon. And didn't you recent? No, 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 no. no. That's no. correct. It's already out. I mean, officially. Out soon in out. here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen here. Uh, because I decided this was... Um, Deliberately, what do you say? No, no, I have this idea to, to release it from my web shop one month ahead. So if you want to buy that ah. from my web shop, then you get it numbered because it's limited edition, uh, double LP with white, white vinyl and all that. And you get it numbered and you get it autographed and you get all these extra stuff, you know, like stickers and, and guitar picks and, and this and that. So, but it's going to be out in Europe and uh, and Australia on the 25th of May and in Japan by mid-June and same for America, I think, you know. But I would really um, recommend people to, to, to buy it directly from me. No middle hands or anything like that, you know. And Snowy, and as far as, sorry, but, sorry to interrupt, but as far as the stuff that you're selling, do you have just a limited edition? Yeah, for the, for the vinyl album, uh, I mean, although he, it has sort of um, been some sort of renaissance when it comes to vinyl albums, so a lot of new collectors and all that, uh, it's still not... Most people nowadays, I mean, they listen to everything digitally. They don't buy any physical products anymore. So that is why I want to be close to the fans and all that, and, and they can buy it straight from me, you know, and, and they get their name signed and all that. But anyway, and and um, it's limited edition, yes. It's like 333 copies of the double LP. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like half evil, half 666, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's really cool, and I put a lot of emphasis on making it exclusive and limited, and so it's uh, something uh, collector's item, I should say, you know. And now, didn't you guys just recently play a show with the new material with this band or your solo uh, project? Yeah, but last weekend I had this sort of sensational, revolutionary thing called a live stream release party. I I believe that I was the first to do this (laughs) because after all these years of uh, having toured with bands all over the world, some bands, for for instance, Therion, they were massively big in Mexico and in Latin America, Central uh, uh, South America, while other bands might might have been more popular in Japan or or America and so on. Uh, So I decided why should I throw a little release party here in, in Gothenburg and invite like two, three hundred people and just reach out to them? What's the point? So so I decided to have it at home. I actually invite, I had this professional film crew uh, with producers and all that and everything was sort of arranged in a, in a good way, almost like Big Brother if you have that show with <laughs> all, of all the rooms and all that. So, so you could meet the dogs and, and, and you sort of, I... I had a guy in the basement that I tied up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really an overview of the bedroom and people were wondering, wow, oh, what's going to happen there? <laughs> yeah, but it was a, real, a lot of cool things. And then we played live. This went out to all over the world over via, via YouTube, of course. Mm-hmm. So, so you could have the interaction with fans from all over the world. I believe that we had viewers from more than 50, 51 countries or wow. more uh, watching this. And... Uh, so I think this was like a really cool idea about apparently um, the, the, the hard part of being um, uh, sort of like a trailblazer or a pioneer or something is that people don't understand what you're doing because they've never seen it before, you know. Mm-hmm. But this was a really, really cool thing and, it, and um, it turned out really good and everybody was like so pleased that I invited a lot of 
friends, like familiar faces, famous people and, and good friends and all that to my house. So I basically invited the whole wide world into my home, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of cool. It's going out, like you said, it's just like a, sin a TV show. There you go. Maybe you found your new calling. <laughs> yeah, but Life with way, Snowy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the way I figured, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not afraid of trying new things mm -hmm. in that sense that it's a very different world now, and and since the internet, everything has pretty much changed. I mean, we're sitting here talking to each other uh, across the pond, so mm -hmm. to speak, and 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 in real time and all that. Uh, but anyway, so everything has changed, and and you have to tag along in a way and, and uh, also when it comes to promoting your music and reaching out to people you can do that I mean if I could I had those kind of question and answer like Q&A's and people were, were asking questions and I and I replied to that in real time mm -hmm. you know people from Argentina or whatever I mean that's a cool thing why, why shouldn't you utilize and, and, and try to, to make the best out of that and, and think in new ways and think out of the box basically you know, you know so so yeah, but I meet a lot of conservatism in that sense. When I when I presenting like I was doing with my with my live shows, I started doing this. Uh, I, it's like six or years ago, something now. When I, I was out touring, let, let me say I was out touring for three months in Europe with with, um, with shows back to back for three months with Therion, and we went to a lot of Eastern European countries and Russia and all that. To a lot of countries that I've never been before, and I basically haven't heard about the countries, but each and every day I've met so many fans who said, hey man, you should go back to Memento Mori again. Why don't you make another album with Ill Will? Please go back to Dream Evil. They're not as good without you. And I, I would love to see you play drums with King Diamond again. And I mean, it's nothing unusual that you hear those kind of things from fans. Uh, and it's, it's flattering and, it's, uh, and I appreciate that. But this was like completely overwhelming. And I, I was thinking, and it started to, to, to bug me a little bit, like, how can I please everybody at the same time? I mean, it's only 24 hours a day. I cannot possibly pay, play with 10 bands at the same time, you know? So I was like thinking, uh, what stops me from doing this myself in my own name, since I'm sort of like the, the connection here between all that. Mm -hmm. And then I invite fr uh, friends, um, guests from all those bands like Michael Denner or or Mike Weed and, and, and all those people to do, do those kind of shows and I play all my favorite songs from all my former bands and um, and for most of the stuff I from, from what I was doing live I probably uh, wrote maybe 60% of it 65% of it mm -hmm. and Cool. Oh, oh, that is cool. But when I was, I thought this was like, wow, this is the best of show. It's like the super show that everyone, everybody would love to see. Because if you go to the show, you, wow, maybe we hear Satan's Fall tonight. We don't know. Or you hear uh, Book of Heavy Metal, obviously, or something. You know, but all those songs. So, so you are still familiar with all the songs. In compared to if I would put together my own band, go out like now and do ten new songs that people have no sort of history that I haven't listened to it really, you know, mm -hmm. I haven't grew, grown up with it. So anyway, <coughs> when I was presenting this kind of thing to, to people like a uh, Live Nation, a big um, booking agency here, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, they didn't understand the concept. What is it that you don't understand? Yeah, but we've never seen that before. Yeah, but just because you haven't seen it before doesn't make it a bad idea, does it? No, but we, 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 we cannot picture it to ourselves because they are not visionaries and mm -hmm. they yeah, but imagine the guy who presented a wheel back in the day. <laughs> yeah, if he would be stuck with the, you know like the, that kind of resistance and people, ah, we never seen that before. Well, couldn't it be triangular? No, it's better if it's round. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but you have to fucking fight that kind of thing all the time, and it, and it takes people usually a couple of years to to for for them to realize, yeah, that was a really good idea. You know. Uh, Sort of, I sort of strayed away from from the from the topic here, but anyway, what I'm doing now, yeah, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Last I knew, we were inventing the wheel. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> no, we were just talking about um, how you. With the, with the new project, how you presented it to everybody 
through YouTube so you can get it out to the whole world by yeah, actually I, I, utilizing. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually, I think that's the, a thing for the future, and, and we were already been talking about that with uh, together with the film team and all that to do more of that in the future. Uh, because uh, I realize that I see a lot of my, my, my friends and all that, they don't want to go to shows. Oh, it's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of hassle going there and taking a taxi and then you get, a, get a, someone to look after your dogs or whatever it might be. So, mm -hmm. so if you can comfortably sit at home and, and, and be still part of something and interact with the band and see live and all that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I, I think I'm going to use this live stream release party as a, some sort of uh, template or demo mm -hmm. or whatever you want to say. And um, do more of that because it's, it's getting harder and harder to tour and, and, and compete with all the bands. Nobody sells a lot of records these days. So all the bands that have to be out like 250 days per year or something like that to be able to earn a living, you know? And it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of competition, you know? It, it is. And and one more time, Snowy, what are some of the sites where people can go to to pick up the merchandise from you, to pick up uh, the pre-orders, that thing? Yeah, but it's it's uh, www.snowyshaw.net slash webshop. And they Simple got... That. Yeah. They got all kinds of stuff there, and you know, there you guys go. Snowy Shaw has his first real solo album, as you put it, White is the New Black. You could order it now at his website, or you could wait for it to come out, but it's better off to order from you, because then you get all those goodies, and you get it autographed, and all this personalization. Yeah, but... I I really want to, to, to try to establish this as a, some sort of base for everything I do, whether mm -hmm. I put out books or paintings or uh, albums and, and this and that, because I mean, I'm selling uh, from all my projects like Notre Dame and then Mad Architect and uh, I have Therian shirts and Opera Diabolicus and all that. So you get kind of exclusive stuff that are limited. So when I put out a new t-shirt, it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm going to print like uh, 20,000 of them. I mean, maybe it's like 50 of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, first catch. What do you, what is it that you say? Yeah, yeah you're going to be... Uh, on the alert that they can get some really exclusive, uh, exclusive stuff that nobody else has. And uh, yeah, I really want to make that connection with the fans, with the followers, because I mean, uh, yeah, I don't want to, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying, because this, this way they can get this stuff directly from you. They could buy some things directly from you, from the projects that you have personally been involved in instead of getting it at some freaking T-shirt, metal T-shirt, yeah, whatever. If you look at it, um, I had this party last Saturday, and then it was record store day, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that Saturday, all over the world, International Record, record Store Day. Um, and because they have that, it, it's, it's, it's disappearing as we speak. One in uh, every day or something are just vanishing because people are not so interested in buying the physical products. And if you still want that, you should go to my web shop, for example, where you get exclusive stuff. Uh, there are limited edition and you get that kind of personal contact and all that. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future though, but don't you think that people get lazy? I mean, I don't buy any records myself because I, since I left my teens pretty much, I haven't been that much of a fan. I am uh, more of a producer than a customer, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, um, uh, but what I'm getting at is that fuck. I'm getting to so uh, stressed here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I still, I still go to record stores because when I go to record stores, I'm not buying new stuff. I'm looking for the older stuff, and we don't even have. We can just go to your freaking site and get it. We don't have to go look for it at the record stores. <laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, but I think it's kind of a sad uh, development that you see that so many stores, like those small, smaller stores, they they go belly up and. Yeah. and uh, bankrupt or whatever so it's only going to be those big giants uh both in europe and america all over the place because you know I, I'm, I'm consuming music only through spotify basically mm -hmm. and and it's so easy everything is there you know yeah you pay for it and and you know i was doing this interview with the greek magazine 
and they said, so what's your take, what's your opinion about like illegal downloading and, and, and will that ruin the music scene and all? And I said, I'm not so concerned about the illegal downloading because now it's legal. With Spotify, you pay a monthly fee and then you get access to everything. Mm -hmm. But that, that little, the musicians and artists themselves, they, it doesn't end up in their pockets. They don't get just a minuscule little percentage or something. And so, so that is the, the worst, the biggest threat to, to the music scene, I should say. But for those people who still want to buy physical products, you can get it directly from me without any middle hand. And you get it all sort of personalized, you know, you know. Yep, well, so there you all go. Pick up your stuff directly from Snowy. And Snowy, thank you for taking the time out to come on the show and telling us about what's going on with you and your solo project. And all the best to you. Did I miss something? No, I think yeah. you got everything. Is there anything else that you needed to add? Uh, i call you tomorrow. Right? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Snowy. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. <laughs>